Hey guys, Curtis, I'm back in the gym and I'm bringing you another product review. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the Rogue MG3 Multi-Grip Barbell. To keep this flowing really smoothly, we're gonna go over an overview of what the bar actually is. We'll talk about the construction of the bar. I'll give you a couple of my notes that I've gathered while training with this barbell for the past few months. And afterwards, we'll talk about price, and maybe some other competitive options in case this bar may not be for you. To start off with though, I wanna go straight into what this bar is. Now this is a Swiss football multi-grip style bar. You might be wondering why should I buy this type of bar and I can tell you that from experience I find a ton of value in having a neutral grip or multi-grip Swiss multi-grip style barbell because it allows me to bench press with greater frequency. It's experiencing less shoulder pain by being able to turn my hands basically inwards just like that. What you get with the Rogue MG3 is three sets of handles. The inside handles are 10 inches apart from the center of the bar to the other center of the bar, and they are set in at a slight angle. Outside of that, you have a 20 and a 28 inch wide grip bar, and these are both set 90 degrees perpendicular to the shaft that is 14 inches in length, providing tons of loading space for those of you that are just jacked out of your minds and need all 14 inches, or if you use bumper plates. Some notes on that sleeve though, this is a non-rotating sleeve, which really doesn't matter too much for most people. Uh, additionally, it is a black powder coat for the whole length and requires specialty collars because it is 1.9 inch outside diameter. Most of the time, I personally don't recommend using collars while bench pressing anyways, and that is the primary use of this bar. However, if collars are something that you want, you'll need to invest in axle style collars so that it can actually clamp onto the outside of the sleeve. One note on this as well is it is a powder coat sleeve. Because of that, there's going to be some inherent wear and tear that occurs as a result of normal use. Don't be surprised when that powder coat wears off and you start to get some oxidation issues out there. Really, in the grand scheme of things, it probably doesn't matter all that much, but if the look of the bar is something that's important to you over time, that powder coat is going to wear off. Now, speaking of that powder coat, the powder coat is uniform going all the way from the sleeve throughout the entire bar. The bar portion from here to here is 41 inches long, which makes it compatible in most power racks. I'm actually using it in a MB Power Center yoke right now, and I've encountered zero issues being able to get this thing in and out of the rack. The overall weight is 43 pounds, which if I'm being honest, there's always a part of me that's annoyed when a barbell is like almost 45 pounds. It's like, couldn't you just like throw two extra pounds of steel in this thing to make it weigh 45 pounds. Now the indicated weight is 43 pounds on the website. When I threw this on the scale, it was exactly 43 pounds, which is really nice because oftentimes with specialty bars, you'll have what the website claims, and then you'll have what the barbell actually weighs. And it's nice that Rogue has made it accurate to reflect what you're actually going to be using in training. So that's the overview of the bar. What I wanna talk about now is the quality of construction overall. As is typical with almost all road equipment, everything is actually very nice looking. And as far as construction is concerned, just to show everything I'm about to say up into one sentence, it's real nice. The welds are nice and clean. They're all uniform. There's nothing that's not centered. Everything presents itself nicely. There's no slag bits to catch your fingers on at all. I have had some past experiences with other brands where there'll be small amounts of slag. That's just on the outside. It doesn't take much to knock them off, but the quality control that Rogue continues to put out with their barbells is top notch and really a leader in the market. Some of the other common issues I've seen with other brands is sometimes Times the handles will be not quite centered in between the bar here, but everything on this is perfectly placed. There's nothing that's especially out of whack. All the handles that are supposed to be 90 degrees perpendicular are 90 degrees, and these ones are the same angle from the right to the left handle. One additional note on the handles is that they do carry a knurl, and the knurl is actually a really high quality knurl, especially for something done on hollow tube. Now, one thing I do think that Rogue could do to set themselves apart 
from the other manufacturers of pretty much this exact same barbell is to maybe put a break in the middle of the knurling on each one of the handles. This will help you later on when you're training. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but there is an inherent a level of instability to this barbell when you use it. It's not because it's the Rogue barbell, it's just because of the design of it. Again, cover that a little bit later in the video. But the consistency of the knurl throughout all the handles is beautiful. The powder coat marries well with that knurl as well. So the powder coat definitely fills it in, but it doesn't take away. It feels nice in the hand and it leaves a nice imprint when you grip it really hard. The powder coat throughout the entire bar is very uniform. There's no bits that aren't powder coated well. There's nothing that's missing. There's no oxidation, even after some use for a while. Again, the only thing with the powder coat that I'm maybe not a fan of is that it does extend onto the sleeve itself. And because of that, you are gonna have the wear down of that powder coat and you will eventually have some oxidation issues. On that though, the ends of the sleeve even though this is hollow tube, they're capped off. And for me, this is just one of those little things, one of those little touches that I really enjoy. Not only are they capped off, but you can't even tell where they're welded or how they were capped off to begin with. So just really nice, small details. Again, Rogue being the leader in the market as far as quality is concerned, doing an amazing job of keeping those small details in the final product. Additionally, there's no slag bits inside the barbell. There have been other brands where when I review it and I shake the bar, you can hear little shavings of metal, little slag bits that have gotten trapped inside the tubing. That is not the case with this one at all, which for me, again, is just one of those little things. It doesn't make a difference in how the bar operates. It doesn't make a difference in anything else, but when you pay for a Rogue product, you are getting a top of the line product and not having little slag bits rolling around doesn't take away from training, doesn't frustrate you, it doesn't make you feel like you have a subpar piece of equipment. Now just some notes from training. I did mention earlier that there is a small level of instability in the bar just because of the design of the bar. The reason for that is because when you load the barbell, the center of the loading pin is the same center up and down as where the handles currently rest. So when you grip the bar, if you grab it a little bit off center, what you tend to get is a little bit of pull back, or if you grip it too far back, pull forward. I really do think that it's a small, uh, just kind of nuanced thing. And again, it's not with the Rogue MG3, just the Rogue MG3. It's going to be with any barbell where the handles are 90 degrees to where the, the plate loading pin is loaded and they're at the same height. I hope I'm describing that okay. At the end of the day, that's what leads me to give the feedback to Rogue that if they were to mark the center of the handle, it could potentially help people with setting up regularly and consistently. However, these two inside handles, these narrow handles are really nice, especially if you're doing any sort of close grip training, whether that's close grip bench press or overhead press. You could also use those for doing curls, which I know seems like a lot. However, having that slight inward grip does just make it a little bit more comfortable. So it's kind of like a modified hammer curl. The straight handles, again, awesome for bench pressing, very awesome for overhead pressing. With the handles being 20 inches apart, they are fairly close to what a standard strongman log handle distance would be. So it does offer that training ability as well. If you can't afford a strongman log, but you're looking for a multi-grip bar, this could be an option for you to train overhead log. Although it's not exactly the same, it does give you a similar feel. So the main thing that I use this bar for is for bench press, overhead press, and for curls. Another where area that you can use it is for any sort of bent over row. However, with the width being like 10 inches overall, it does force you to put the weight forward of your midfoot quite a bit. So if you're doing some heavier bent over rows, you may encounter some issues where you're just kind of unable to get the bar into a good position to begin the row. However, it is really nice to have those different handle options when you're doing a row, and that could also be usable as a seal row bar. It could be used as any number of things. Some other ways that you can use this is to do an inverted row. 
and you could also use it as a multi-grip pull-up bar. Now with anything in the gym, it is up to your imagination on how many ways you can use one piece of equipment. So I would challenge you to not view that list as a all-inclusive list, but something to get you started and maybe you come up with your own. Comment down below with any other ways that you use your multi-grip bar at home. Last but not least, what I wanna cover is price and then some of the other comparable options on the market. This bar from Rogue Fitness is $310. You will have to pay additional shipping, and if you live in certain states, like I live in Ohio, you will also have to pay sales tax on that bar. That does feel like a lot of money, but when you look across the board at all equipment manufacturers, all of them are basically having prices go up exponentially. It's been something that's felt across the entire gym equipment manufacturing in 2021 when this video is being made, and hopefully we see that come back down. But $310 plus shipping for the Rogue Barbell. Now there are a lot of companies that make pretty much this exact same bar. There might be slight variations, and I just wanted to give you a couple of those options right here. Of course, right off the bat, we have to have Titan Fitness because what piece of rogue equipment does Titan Fitness not copy? The Titan Fitness bar is $159. That does include shipping to you, which is pretty insane considering that I've actually held that bar and it is almost exactly the same bar, just not with all of the nice finished details. However, it is a lot better value, but if being made in USA is important to you, maybe Titan Fitness isn't something that you wanna personally go with. Outside of Titan Fitness, you also have companies like American Barbell. American Barbell's version of this bar is $335, which is more than Rogue, obviously. However, if American Barbell is closer to you, it might be a better option just because the shipping charge may be significantly less. The American Barbell version is very high quality. American Barbell makes very high-end stuff. Um, really no, nothing bad to say about it. I've never held it in my hand, but I have looked at it online. And it has a slightly more rounded design, which from my opinion, after using this bar, may actually be really nice, especially for those of you that do have a narrower rack, because it gives you a little bit of uh, an easier path back into the rack when you finish with a set. Another less expensive option would be Arch On Fitness. That is $139, you do pay for shipping and they actually have a big caveat right on their website saying that they're not ripping you off by giving you free shipping because they kind of give you a little bit of look into what free shipping actually means and that usually means that the product is grossly overpriced and you just pay for shipping, you know, kind of like crowdfunding shipping across the board. So if you live close to Archon, you're going to pay less. If you live far away, you're gonna pay more. I do recommend you clicking the link down below and checking it out. It does look like a very nice bar. I personally never held it, but it does have a slightly different handle layout where it has uh, like a 90 degree barbell here and then angled and then 90s on the outside of that. You also have Fringe Sports, $234 plus free shipping. And it seems to be pretty much an exact clone of this. Now I've used other pieces of Fringe Sport equipment before and based on my past experience with Fringe, I would say it's probably very close if not the exact same as this as far as quality is concerned. It may not have some of the knurling bits. I really can't speak to that because I haven't held the bar, but it does cost significantly less money, almost $100 less. Vulcan Strength, $259 plus shipping. They are out of stock as of the day that I made this, which is actually a nice thing if you look at all these other manufacturers and what we went through in 2020. Everybody does seem to have everything back in stock, which is really nice because you're able to get equipment more quickly. One additional thing about the Vulcan Strength is that it does have hard chrome sleeves, so you're not gonna get that wear and tear on the powder coat. Finally, I wanted to talk about an offering from Elite FTS with the American Press Bar. The American Press Bar is $325 plus shipping. I've used other American like press bars the, that, that's carried by Elite FTS. And I can tell you that they are pretty nice, although I did have a slight slag issue with one bar that I used from them in the past. One additional really nice thing about the Elite FTS bar is that the handles in the middle are really thick, and then as you get outwards, they actually get progressively thinner as you go. 
This is supposed to help you be able to use it the bar better. So it is nice to have that extra little bit of R&D go into a barbell that's offered. In conclusion, the Rogue MG3 is an awesome barbell. It does cost a little bit of money, but you're getting that made in USA, that Rogue quality, and you're also getting a very awesome and nice piece of equipment that's gonna last you for years and years to come. As is with everything Rogue, it is a little bit overbuilt. My personal opinion is that it really doesn't need the knurled handles. I think that just a nice textured powder coat would work just fine here, but you are paying for those extra little bits and pieces that make the Rogue bar stand apart from the competition. If you're a Rogue addict, you're not gonna be disappointed. This is going to stand next to all of your other Rogue products and it's going to look and feel the same as everything else you've bought from Rogue, where it's gonna have the small details, it's gonna look nice, it's gonna work well. And again, it's not going to break on you. It's going to work really well. I do, however, think that there's a lot of options, and for most people, I think that they would find benefit in looking at maybe some of those less expensive options. That does kind of kill me to say a little bit because Rogue probably made this design uh, first, I can't actually speak to who made it first. I don't know the history of this bar, but I would be willing to bet that Rogue came up with this final design with the sleeve stability and everything and how it's put together. And a lot of other companies have basically looked at their success and copied it and done it at a budget price. For me personally, if I was starting and I was going to buy a multi-grip barbell that was a flat style multi-grip barbell, this is a good option. However, I think personally, I would look at other options, maybe such as Fringe Sport, Titan Fitness. I think that for a specialty barbell such as this, especially one that's kind of limited on how many different things you can really use it for, going budget maybe isn't really that bad of a thing. But that's just my opinion. Tell me what you guys think down below. That's been it for my review on the Rogue MG3 bar. Tell me what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think it's overpriced? Do you think it's underpriced? Let me know. I really do want your opinions and I do enjoy the discussions that we have down below the video. I appreciate each and every single one of you guys that watch these videos. And remember that when it comes to your garage gym equipment, you should always make it better, awesome, and of course, badass. I'll see you next time.